Good morning, church. I'm so excited to be sharing the word with you this morning. It's always a privilege and an honor to share God's word. I just want to go straight into the word this morning. And the title for the message this morning is, God is preparing me. God is preparing me. And we'll read from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 to 2. And then we'll skip the five verses and then go to uh, verse 7 to 11. Exodus chapter 3, the first two verses, and then verses 7 to 11. It says, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. Verse 7, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hands of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hevites, and Jebusites. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. Verse 10 says, So now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God is preparing me. I wonder if we could start by just putting our hands on the forehead and repeat those words. God is preparing me. Say them out loud. God is preparing me. These are prophetic words that I think we can prophesy over our lives, especially when we go periods where we don't understand what is happening to us, as we will certainly see in the life of Moses. Now, Moses' life was an interesting life. His story was an interesting story because he lived up to 120 years of age, and the years of his life are remarkably divided into categories of 40 years each. From birth to the age of 40, Moses lived in Egypt as a prince in Pharaoh's court. The next 40 years, he was a shepherd in the land of Midian. And then the last 40 years of his life, he spent them uh, on the move, leading the people of Israel to the promised land. You see, Moses was born with a death sentence over his head, just to put a context to what we're going to be sharing this morning. For Moses to be alive at the time when God called him, it was a miracle. This was a man who escaped death as a child because Pharaoh had given the instruction that all baby boys born to Hebrew women should be killed. The Bible tells us that when Moses' mother looked at him, she saw that he was no ordinary child. And that is a very big statement, very interesting, in that she looked at her baby and she saw that Moses was no ordinary child. How did she see the greatness in Moses? How does a mother look at a child and see and distinguish the child from all other children and say, this is no ordinary child. I think it speaks to us as parents that we should prophesy in the lives of our children. We must speak words of life in their lives, especially when they are born, when they're still young, when they've just come into this world. We must speak life 
in the lives of our children, which is a challenge for us parents. We must always prophesy in the lives of our children. In addition to that, Pharaoh's daughter gave him a prophetic name. Moses means drawing out. Drawing out. Moses was drawn out of the water. Yes, she drew him out of the water. That was on a smaller scale. The bigger picture was that Moses was going to draw the people of God from slavery and lead them uh, into the promised land. He was going to draw them from the hot water of captivity, the waters of bondage, and take them to the promised land. So our earlier years in life are never wasted. They are part of the process that God uses to prepare us for his calling. I am encouraged that in our church we have the kids ministry, we also have the youth ministry. Those ministries are laying the foundation for our children so that when they grow up, they will not depart from the ways of the Lord. They are trained in the ways of the Lord from an early age. I'm encouraged by the Elisha and Abigail show. It's a show that I can see is there preparing them for what is going to happen to them in the future. I prophesy that God will use them mightily. I prophesy that God will use those kids for his own glory in the kingdom of God. When Moses got to the age of 40, he killed an Egyptian whom he saw mistreating a fellow Israelite. Moses had gone ahead of God. He tried to save his people through his own strength. God had not spoken to him at that moment. God did not give him the instruction to kill anybody. But because he had that sense of injustice inside of him, he took the matters into his own hands and he killed an Egyptian. At that point, he was not ready to be used of God. God could not use him at that point because he lacked self-control. He lacked the ability to deal with the people and situations. He needed to go for further training. And a lot of times we can also get ahead of God. We can take matters into our own hands. In spite of what God would have said, we rush and go ahead and do things that we are not supposed to be doing. He became a murderer, and that was not according to God's plan. So God could see that at that point in time, Moses was not ready for the job that he had uh, planned for him. Exodus chapter 2 verse 15 tells us that when Pharaoh heard of this incident, he tried to kill Moses, but Moses fled and went to live in Midian. And it's interesting to note that this was the second time that Moses escaped death from Pharaoh. Why? Because God had an assignment for him. God was preparing him for a future assignment. And now he enters the second stage of his life in Midian. He was just a shepherd looking after his father-in-law's sheep. From a prince in Pharaoh's court to a shepherd in the forests of Midian. Or as Pastor Mike said last week, talking about the prodigal son, he went from plenty to empty, from Prada to Nada. Now these are the vicissitudes of life. How quickly the circumstances of life changes sometimes. This was a different lifestyle from the one that he was accustomed to. Therefore, making that transition must have been difficult for him. In some ways, it must have been difficult. You see, the road to destiny is not always straightforward. Paths may change, but the destiny itself will not change. Sometimes there are twists and turns along the way. But when life gives you a hundred reasons to cry, you must also give life a thousand reasons to smile. God was preparing Moses for his destiny, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those whom he has called according to his purpose, as Romans chapter 8, verse 28 will tell us. Moses had to go through a humbling process. He had to go through the process of being humbled in obscurity, where he would spend the next 40 years of his life 
in Midian. As a shepherd, there was not much going on around apart from maybe raising up his family. But it is during this particular period of his life that he learned some valuable skills that would help him to become the great leader that he became in, God, in leading God's people from bondage, the bondage of slavery. I felt compelled to look at this particular period of his life and I wanted I want to, to, to examine that period in detail. I wonder if we could prophesy again to ourselves by holding our hands on the forehead and say these words, God is preparing me for my destiny. God is preparing me for my destiny, for a place of significance in my life. Psalm 77 verse 20 says, You led your people like a flock by the hands of Moses and Aaron. Number one, feeding. One of the most important characteristics of a shepherd is his ability to feed his flock well. Moses was chosen to be God's spokesman, feeding the people with both God's word and food to eat. He constantly reminded the Israelites of the goodness of God because oftentimes they would forget and start complaining and start murmuring whenever they encountered some problems along the journey. He fed them with spiritual food and physically prayed for them to get manna and quail at one time when they were hungry. At one time when they were thirsty, he struck the rock and water came out uh, in, in Meribah. Secondly, protecting and rescuing. Moses started off by rescuing the girls that came to water their, their sheep at the well when he got to Midian. See, this sense of injustice was always with him, and that is what God chose to work with. He rescued the girls when they came to water uh, their flock at a well in Midian. And not only that, he also watered the flock for the girls. And even in that simple act of kindness, he was also sowing the seeds for his marriage. Moses went on to marry Zipporah, who was one of the seven girls that came to water their flock at the well, the daughters of Jethro. So sometimes what saddens us, what makes us sad, could be a clue of what uh, assignment God has for us. The encounters that we have in life, they help us to shape our future. He was always sensitive to uh, people mistreating each other. That is why he killed the Egyptian and wanted to intervene when he saw the two Hebrew men quarreling between themselves. When he arrived in Midian, he rescued the girls that came to the well. Third point is shearing. Now, shearing is the process by which the woolen fleece of a sheep is cut off. The sheep do not like the shearing process itself, but they feel good and lighter after the process. It doesn't usually hurt the sheep if done expertly. It requires skill so that there are no injuries to the sheep or the shearer himself. So Moses brought that comfort to his people. The love and tenderness with which he dealt with the Israelites marked him out as a good shearer. He brought correction where correction was needed. And we know that not many people want to be corrected. But we also know that correction is important. Correction is needed. It is healthy for us if it is done properly or with expertise. Point number four, delivering the lambs. I'm sure there were children born during the pilgrimage. And as a leader, he also took care of the children born in the camp. Not only making sure that they were physically fed, but more importantly, that they were trained in the ways of the Lord. A scripture will tell us to train up our children in the ways of the Lord so that when they grow up, they will not depart from it. And lastly, finding the lost sheep. 
there will always be one that chooses to go astray. The Bible tells us that a good shepherd will leave the rest of his flock to find the one that is missing, to find the one that is lost. Moses had many quarrels, many disagreements with the people that he was trying to bring out of captivity. But it was his duty as a leader to bring them back in line with God's plan for their lives. At one time, he went up Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments from the Lord. And by the time he came back, the people had built a calf to worship the calf as their God. At that point, the entire nation was lost and he had to bring them back to God pleading and begging God for mercy, because that, that's what a leader does. Instead of letting God's anger burn against these people, Moses begged God and intervened and interceded for them because they were his flock. That is what a good leader does. So our daily encounters and experiences help to prepare us for the future. They prepare us for our destiny even when we may not be aware of it. I'm reminded of the time when David faced uh, Goliath and he looked back and said, I killed a lion with my own hands. I killed a bear with my own hands. So who is this uncircumcised Philistine who dares to defy the armies of the living Lord? Which means that the experience that he had with the lion and the bear, the encounters that he had with those two animals prepared him for his encounter with Goliath. Prophesy to yourself one more time and say, God is preparing me. Only when Moses was ready, did God appear to him in a burning bush. I have heard the cries of my people Israel. So now go, I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites out of Egypt. See, God is always moving. He's always looking for individuals to assign some specific tasks. But Moses said, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out? Moses wrestled with destiny. He resisted his call to greatness, arguing with God that he was not the right man for the job. But God kept assuring him, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. As Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 says, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. See, God knows when we are ready for his assignments because he prepares, he prepares us before he sends us. But the question is, do we look at our own ability or God's ability in us, what he can accomplish in and through us. God is never happy when we tell him that we are not able because a lot of times the reasons that we give him are based on fear or they are based on some other excuses that we may think are valid. In Exodus chapter four, verse 11, God says to Moses, who gave man his mouth? Who makes him deaf or mute? Who gives him sight or makes him blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you a prophet unto the nations. See, when God sends us on errands, we can be sure that we have all the resources of heaven at our disposal. Even when we face attacks from the enemy, the Lord will raise a standard. He will take the battles out of our hands and make the battles his own. Touch not the anointed one, said the Lord. Do my prophets no harm. Now, I don't know what the Lord may be asking you to do in this season, but I know that whatever it is, he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will also equip you with the necessary tools for that task to be accomplished. 
God does not lose. It is not in his nature to lose battles. So you can be sure and confident that you will accomplish that task successfully. The thing is we often respond to a supernatural God through our natural senses. And that is a big mistake that we make. We have to shift gears and come up higher. We have to move from the mindset of impossibilities to that which says, with God, all things are possible. We should move from our own limitations and look beyond our present circumstances. Lord, why me? Please send someone else. I am not eloquent of speech. I am a stammerer. I am not educated. I am not tall enough. The list is endless. These are all excuses which are not pleasing to God because they are based on the limitations that we have chosen to put on ourselves. And yet the word of God is very clear. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord of hosts. Plans to give you hope and a good future. Other translations will say, plans to give you, to bring you to an expected ending. Which means there is an expected ending for you and I. And God knows where we should end up in our lives. We may not know it, but God knows. That's what makes him God. He knows things that we don't know. The secret things belongs to the Lord our God, but the things that are revealed, he has given to us and to our children. Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts and my ways higher than yours. I did not give you a spirit of fear, but that of love, power, and a sound mind. See, the secret of our future is hidden in our daily experiences. Even the bad experiences in life also teach us something. The skills and patience that Moses learned in the 40 years in the wilderness, the 40 years of tending the sheep in the forest of Midian, prepared him for the leadership role of taking God's people from Egypt to the promised land. At the age of 80, God called Moses to begin his ministry. In spite of having received great learning in Egypt, he accepted the life of a shepherd, and he learned about contentment, meekness, patience, and humility. You may be an educate, educated person right now doing a simple job. I want to encourage you this morning that you continue doing that job because in any situation we find ourselves in, in any job that we find ourselves in, there is always something that we can learn in that situation. God wants us to be productive. God wants us to keep moving, to keep working, and he will meet us in the most unlikeliest places. Therefore, keep working, keep moving, and one day it will all make sense. A lot of times in life, it is only when we look back at the things that have happened to us that we begin to understand, that we begin to see that all things were working together and preparing us for God's own purposes in our lives. God is always working. Moses saw more of God in the desert than he did in Pharaoh's court. So it's not always in the comfort, comfortable places that we find our blessings, that we meet God. Sometimes God's blessings are, are, and opportunities are located in the challenges that we face in our lives. I read the other day that when Mother Eagle is building a nest for her babies, she uses the thorny branches as the foundation for her nest. And then inside that nest, she puts some soft feathers so that it's comfortable for her babies. But then the, when the time comes for the babies to leave the nest, sometimes they are reluctant to do so. What Mother Eagle then does is she takes out those soft feathers inside, leaving the babies now exposed to those thorny branches. The purpose is not to harm the babies, 
but to give an indication to the babies that it's now time to move on to the next stage of their lives. God may be doing the same to us. When God wants to move you and I to higher ground, he will remove the soft feathers of the comfort zone that we are in so we can experience the painful thorns. The purpose again is not to harm us, but to bring us to our expected ending. So be encouraged when you are facing challenges in life because he who is mighty is doing mighty things for you. And sometimes it's difficult to see what he's doing, but he's doing mighty things for you and I. God knows. God will always prepare his people for something that they cannot handle. Do not under, underestimate your life experiences because even the bad experiences may teach us some valuable lessons in life. You know, I believe that we are now coming to the end of this lockdown. I can see us coming out of the lockdown pretty much very soon. But I also think that it will be sad for us if we just move on with our lives as if nothing happened without us taking the time to look back and ask ourselves, what have we learned in that lock lockdown? Because every experience, every experience that we encounter in life is also teaching us something. I believe we should take time to reflect and ask ourselves some very painful questions so that we can take some solutions for us uh, in the future. I'm not a prophet of doom, but the whole thing begs the question, what if we find ourselves in that same situation sometime ahead in the future? What if we, we find ourselves in the same predicament in life? Because life is so unpredictable. We must have learned something during these past three months that we should take with us into the future. Even though we may not see it, God is working in our lives. In good or bad times, God is working. When we are awake or sleeping, God is working. Whether we like it or not, God is working in our lives. We just don't see it. It's like sitting behind the television or a computer. All we see are the motion pictures, but behind each screen, there are a lot of wires and connections that we cannot see that make that experience of us watching the TV possible. But we cannot see the wires. The fact that we cannot see them does not mean that they are there. They are there working all the time. So God is like that sometimes. We don't see him working, but he's working behind the scenes. God took what was in Moses' hand, his stuff, and made more of it than Moses could have ever dreamed because his provision is guaranteed at our place of assignment. God has given all of us something that we can use for his own glory. Never look down on yourself. Keep looking up. Keep on pushing. Sometimes it's difficult to tell how close you are to your destiny. But if God could wait for snails to enter the ark of Noah, his door of grace will not close before you reach your expected position in life. Those that are weak in themselves may be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. God is always working. And isn't it ironic that Moses, the man that God chose to deliver his people from Pharaoh, was educated and brought up within the courts of Pharaoh. Moses' mother received a salary from Pharaoh's budget to do that which she should have been doing anyway, raising up her child. She got paid to raise up her own son, and Pharaoh himself was not aware of all this. He was unaware of the storm that was brewing in his own court. Pharaoh's downfall was initiated by his own daughter because his daughter disobeyed him. She raised up a Hebrew child within the very courts of Pharaoh and that child went away and came back to challenge Pharaoh and then lead him to the Red Sea where he perished. In the end, the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10 that there has never been another prophet in Israel like Moses 
whom the Lord knew face to face. Moses learned that God will prepare and equip a person to carry out an assignment. And this is true today as it was in the days of Moses. Moses was content in his heart and trusted God with his life, even when he knew he would not enter the promised land. This is what Moses said before his death. There is no God like the God of Jeshurun, which means Israel, who rides across the heavens to help you and on the clouds in his majesty. Deuteronomy chapter 33 verse 26. God will always prepare us before he asks us to go on an assignment. You and I can be sure that if God is sending us, victory is guaranteed in the name of Jesus Christ. I hope you were blessed. God bless you.